Federal High Court has ordered uh, the federal government to enforce the national gender policy by allotting 35% of appointments in the public sector to women. Justice Donato Zokorowo upheld the argument of Women in Politics Forum, a non-governmental organization holding that, Nigerians, that Nigerian women had been subjected to various forms of discrimination concerning appointments into key positions of government. Subsequent or several governments over the years has been marginalizing women in their own country and the courts condemned this act and held that the right of Nigerian women to freedom from discrimination must be recognized and enforced by all authorities and persons in Nigeria. So the court agreed that the lopsided appointment of the male gender into appointive positions in Nigeria is a gross violation of section 42, section 147, and section 14 of the 1999 constitution as amended, and several other international treaties that Nigeria is a signatory to. So the court therefore compelled the Nigerian president to comply with this law forthwith and ensure that the rights of Nigerian women are protected and guaranteed on all fronts. The court recognizes the fact that for a very long time Nigerian women have been discriminated against in terms of being included in the governance of the country that they constitute almost half of the population. So for us it is victory and for the government we know that they will acknowledge this and do the needful in terms of ensuring that we have a balanced system of um, governance that will bring about fast development for the country and that would address all other issues affecting the country. Most, so, most countries in the world have gone far ahead in terms of ensuring that there's a gender balance, there's gender equality. Well, joining us now for reactions to this is a gender advocate and communications lead of Woman Nifesto, Adora. Oh, yeah, Cherry. Thank you so much, Adora, for joining Thank us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, should we start celebrating? How <laughs> significant is this and what does it translate to? I think this April 6th, 2022, it's a watershed for Nigerian women in terms of looking at, you know, gender rights as human rights. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most important thing to note is that it sets a precedence for the Nigerian, you know, government. It is also a travesty on the federal government to have to go to court with the Nigerian women. I mean, it is quite, somebody will say it's a, whis it's a whimsical attempt. And so for me, I think that it's a step in the right direction. It also opens up the space for women to participate in politics and governance, but most importantly to look at women's rights amongst all the status quo for instance in the appointive positions um, most of it is gender related and mostly based on the men and so what this what this judgment does for us as Nigerian women is that it opens up the space and it questions you know the credibility of the Nigerian state and its appointive you know uh, template in, in the space of governance right and one wonders you know even though we're, we're saying the government should not even bother appealing but what if the government decides to appeal this judgment because it has the opportunity to do that in court what happens next um Amak, i think it's a, it's a very sad situation that we're even sitting here and asking that question because it then means that we have filled in all ramifications to stand up for what you know the most of the population that makes the mark that goes to the elections to vote that are the bottom bearers of insecurity and that their lives do not count it also means that the parliamentarians who voted down the gender bills are only towing the you know the walk path of the federal government who also is the lead conversationist in this agenda but i think going forward for me i mean the the judgment, when you look at, you know, section 42, so, so, section 147, and all the sections that it seems to look at and have a say in making sure that the gender policy is implemented, is just a step in the right direction. But I think what this is, is an instruction to the National Assembly, mm. for those who step down the gender bills, to say, look, you know, regardless of what that, you know, nomenclature means for you, but for the Nigerian women, we're not stepping any backwards. We're going to continue with the advocacy. And I know that the, the cause and the conversation on implementation comes up, yeah. you know, what mm. next? How do we take that conversation further? But I think that, you know, Nigerian women have shown their strength. I mean, I've been issued, they thought it was just a guy to be able to you know have some level of negotiation and, and you know fair play in the field but it's not about fair play mm -hmm. it's about justice 
is about equity. It's about human rights. And I think that that's what this judgment means for all of us as Nigerian women and for the next generation of girls. You know, and, and that takes me to this point because it's not a lack of laws mm -hmm. or conventions. We have political parties promising 35% mm -hmm. affirmation, such as the ruling party inclusive. Mm -hmm. And the na uh, national gender policy has this 35% affirmation it's uh, in it as well. So. The issue of implementation will come up. Well, let's look at the flip side. Mm. Now that we have this in the bag, what should we be doing with it? What should women do with it? What should uh, gender advo advocates like you, mm. advocacy groups, do mm. with it? Mm. I think we're, we're, we're stepping it down to the community levels, okay. to the rural communities. I think that's where the conversation needs to be expanded. Um, the, the level of understanding and the literacy on the policies that you know expands women's rights should be stepped down to the community level so that the women who are at that level will understand what their rights are and be participants in this conversation. Because at the end of the day, even if we go through the National Assembly to look at the gender bills yeah. and they pass, it will still go to the state assemblies. And so who will be the ones to lobby? Who will be the ones to push for those advocacy and those women at the rural level? And again, like I always say, I mean, it's not yet over till it's over. I mean, it's one thing to have the law. It's another thing to implement the law ah. and collaborate. In right. And while we're talking about implementations, well, we're hoping that the federal government will decide not to appeal this. That is the hope of the Nigerian woman today. But what are the parameters the government should start? working on just in case it decides to that start implementing what we already have with the gender mm -hmm. policy before and now with this new ruling mm -hmm. well first of all we must also look at political party restructuring you know perhaps we step down that conversation for them to activate the already existing constitutions that allows women to feel those rights that are demanded of them. Secondly, we must also look at the appointed positions. I mean, 2023 elections are coming. How right. many women will be given a fair play to be able to, you know, be considered for certain positions? The women themselves also have a charge to right. do what's right. And what's right is to continue to speak out and to take spaces when the spaces are open for taking. Adora Onochera, you know what we are celebrating tonight? Uh, until you know that changes for now the nigerian woman <laughs> yes. we celebrate thank, thank you, you so for joining much. us thank you